Uh, so anyway, so we'll look at percent yield. Now, like I was saying, the actual calculation of percent yield itself is not that challenging. You do actual yield divided by theoretical times 100. Not a big deal. But when you start to involve like the calculating of the actual theoretical yield separately, that's where it becomes far less uh, enjoyable, if you will. So what I want you to do first, I want you to try to do A by itself. Like this is a mass to mass problem. Like part A here is a very basic mass to mass problem. Now in terms of balancing, just really fast, uh, the equation should have these coefficients. So add those in. I won't expect you to put those in though, just like add them in. What? Didn't you say you were gonna give us the balanced equation? I will yeah, I will do that for the other one. Okay. Yeah, I'll, the equations on the test will be balanced too. But anyway, the point is so first like you're gonna do twenty five grams of iron three phosphate. That is this. Now remember, this 3 right here, this Roman numeral 3, all it does is just telling you the charge on iron. It does not affect the formula at all. I mean, it controls how the formula is written, but it's not like you got to worry about it now. Uh, and then we have excess sodium sulfate. What does excess mean? Don't worry about it. It means you cross off, you ignore it basically. And then it says, how many grams of iron 3 sulfate can you get? So it wants to know grams of iron 3 sulfate. That's that. Again, the 3 does not matter, at least not for you. So all you're gonna do, this is mass to mass. This is review from last week. There is no like there's no tricks. This is basic mass to mass problem. See if you can do it just you know while I write it out here yourself. So So you start with your initial grams of FEPO4. You're gonna convert to moles of FEPO4. Now, as far as the mass goes, you should be able at this point to reasonably easily figure out the molar masses and this one is 150.82 again that's just adding up one fe one p and four o's off the periodic table their masses now we're going to convert to our new formula which is going to be moles of fe2 so43 so iron sulfate now, what numbers do I put into these boxes here? What, so, the coefficients from the equation, right? So, we look, we've got FEPO4. In front of it, it has a 2, so put a 2 there. Iron sulfate, what does it have in front of it? One. It's got nothing, so you would put a 1. Remember, if it's blank, assume 1. So you put that down there, then you got your grams of iron 2. <coughs> now are there any questions so far as to like where I'm putting stuff? So you put one mole down there, and then your final thing here, the mass of iron sulfate. Alright, the mass of iron sulfate. I'm trying to figure it out. I think. I got 399.91. It's embarrassing. No. <laughs> no, all right, so you got that. Now, uh, all you're going to do now, again, and this is just two irons, uh, this is three S's, 12 O's. So please make sure you remember all that. You add it all up, you get your answer. Now, as far as doing the math, you multiply on top, divide by the bottom. We're all like, this is review from like, this is a good review for everything that we've been doing. So you end up with 33.14 grams of Fe2. All right, so you get that. Are there any questions on that part? That is that, that is a straight mass to mass problem from last week. Very, it's, it's I don't want to say it's like basic now, but I mean, we've done it a lot now. I've done lots of examples of those, like too many. <coughs> If you're not sure, make sure your units go cancel, you know, that works out, that helps. If they don't cancel, then you obviously forgot something. Now, the next step is the new formula. So it says, if you have 18.5 grams of this iron sulfate that are actually made, actually being the key word, all right, actually is the key word. So this is your actual yield. 
what they're saying is that they physically went and did this reaction. They mixed 25 grams of iron phosphate with excess sodium sulfate. They mixed it together. And from that, they determined that they got 18.5 grams. Like, that's what they actually calculated. And they, they're just saying, like, what's your percent yield? So all you do, I mean, this part's, like I said, separately, it's very easy. You do 18.5 grams. This is your actual. Then this right here, this is your theoretical yield, so you put that on the bottom. Yep, and you do that, and you get that you find, you know, you have a 55.82% yield. Now, that is okay. Like, in the lab that we're going to do, that would be, uh, that would be not so good, to be totally honest with you. In certain reactions, you could view that as maybe being good, but I'll be honest, like, that would be considered a very poor yield, more than likely. Yeah, what? Do we have to write, um, show that work for, like, a test or... The percent calculation? I mean, yeah. Yeah, I guess, yeah. We do? Yeah, sure. Now, I would caution you, please don't forget to do this part. Because, like, the way it's going to be on the test, there's going to be one problem with it all put together, and you, and you can calculate this, but then you'll forget to do the actual, like, percent calculation. That happens a lot. Like, don't forget that. Now, it says, is the answer from problem number three reasonable? So, yeah. sure, it is reasonable. Is it, is it a great yield? No, but does it, is it possible? Yeah. So, I mean, sure, whatever. The, the, the unreasonable version of it would be, like, if you ever calculate something above 100%, that doesn't make any sense. It's not possible. Like if you ever somehow get a percent yield of above 100, then that means there's like a major error in like the actual doing of the, so either yeah, like so that means that somewhere along the line, like if you do the lab next week, like if you're it involves mixing a lot of water and stuff in there. If you don't thoroughly dry your product, you end up with a much higher amount. So you go way over 100 percent yield because then there's a bunch of water left over that should not be there. So that, that's a way to like get an, a higher percent yield than you should. Now, that's all good and fine in that problem, but D is the one that I want to show you for real. This is, the, this is an example directly from your test, basically. Uh, it's worded differently, obviously, but the concept and the, and the way you do this problem is exactly the same. Oh, what? Baja. Uh -huh. Uh, I mean, yeah, if you're getting in like the, like the, the really low percentage, like the signal digits, you probably goof something up there too. I'd say that's, pr that's pretty hard to, to do. So I would, I mean, in terms of what is reasonable, what's not, I mean, I'd have to give you a, a really functional definition. I have not done that. So it, don't worry about it. But yeah, that'd be pretty hard to get to. That'd be pretty ridiculous too. You probably goof that one up. Like if that was to happen. So, okay, all I'm doing here, I'm rewriting the equation. So we just have it down here because we got to reference it again. And like I said, this is a very good example of a test question. So it says, if I do the react or this reaction, so it's referring to this one above here, with 15 grams of sodium sulfate. Now, sodium sulfate. That's this formula right here. So you got 15 grams of sodium sulfate right here. It says you get a 65% yield. It wants to know how many grams of sodium phosphate will you get. Now this is the kind of wording where the problem, it, it definitely becomes a little bit more complicated. What? Can you just multiply by 0.65? No. Why not? Because here's what it's telling you. This is saying you're starting the reaction with this amount. It says you're going to convert this to grams of that. It wants to know, that that's the theoretical. So you're going to do this. This is going to be your theoretical yield. Now, it's telling you that the, like, it's not telling you the actual yield. This wants you to find, it wants to know what is the actual yield. That's the question. That's what it's asking you. So if you look at your formula, it's basically saying you got to calculate theoretical yield it's giving you the percent yield, it wants you to find actual yield. So this initial value is not actual or theoretical, it's just the initial starting value before you do the problem. So you've got to calculate 15 grams of sodium sulfate 
two grams of Na3PO4, then take that answer and multiply it by the 0.65. All right. So what you're going to do, you're going to do a mass to mass problem. So step one here, like step one is basically pretty simple. Just do mass to mass Na2SO4 to Na3PO4. And like I was saying, you see what I mean when you like put this into a problem, the pathway to solving it becomes the, the part that you have to decipher. That's the challenge. So in this case, you're just going to start out, you know, it's basically just mass to mass. Do that. So 15 grams of Is this too low? <coughs> Alright, so you do that. You're going to probably have to yeah, figure out, like, I mean, you should be able to by this point pick out, like, what's sodium sulfate, what's iron phosphate. Well, that's, that's the, you'll just get it from the equation. Like, the, the equation will be given to you. You'll just have to be able to say, okay, sodium sulfate is, like, that thing. All right, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to make you rewrite all the formulas and stuff for this test. That would just take too long. It would be, like, impossible. All right. So that's our mass of sodium sulfate. I know it's getting kind of small. My apologies. All right. Then you're just going to do moles of sodium sulfate. Now for this you're taking the coefficients. So I put my coefficients in there, the three and the two. And then last but not least, you put your moles of Na3PO4 down there, your grams. All right, now does that, what questions does that bring up? Anything? All right. So then your moles and then your mass is 163.94. Again, that's just the mass of three sodium is one P4O's. What? Uh, why do you have to put two at the top? So, like, why am I putting the two and the three, basically? Yeah. Because you have to account for the ratio that they come, that, like, they are found in the equation. That's why you use the coefficients. You've got the three Na2SO4 is that when you have three of those, you react with excess of this other thing, it will make two of the sodium phosphate. So that's why you gotta use the three and the two there. Like that's why I label everything so you know where to put the three, where to put the two, all right? Now you do this, you get your uh, theoretical yield is 11.54 grams Na3PO4. So your theoretical yield, again, what you just calculated that is the theoretical yield of this reaction. But again, the problem wants to know what is the actual yield. Now, the, the formula is, is, you know, it's actual over theoretical times 100 equals your percent. Wow, that was weird. Yield. But the point is, this part, the, the formula in this case, it's almost unnecessary. Because all it really wants you to do, to figure it out, it basically just is saying, all right, your percent yield is 65%. Change that to decimal form, move it over twice, make it 0.65. Take your theoretical yield and just say 11.54 grams. Multiply them together, and that will give you your actual yield. Because all you really want to do at this point is say, all right, I've got my theoretical yield of 65% or my actual yield of 65%. Theoretically, you could get 11.54. So what did you actually get then? So in this case, it turns out to be 7.5 grams Na3PO4. And that is the answer.
I'll show you. Yeah, I'm just going to plug it in the equation, too. Yeah, they should all be balanced. Yeah, what? Uh -huh. So they gave you the actual like, percentage at the um, your unequal budding grams. You just multiply them and get the actual budding grams. Yeah, pretty much. What like so. Uh, yeah, you could work backwards. I think there actually is one where you have to figure out what is the theoretical yield if they tell you the actual, like the actual yield in grams, and then the then the actual, you know, the percent yield. Because then from that you can work backwards and find the theoretical yield. Yes. Yeah, you don't need to worry about that. All right.